Good morning, folks. Remember, today is eclipse day. Visibility is great for most of the world. Australia and New Zealand need to watch pre-sunrise in a few hours. India has the best view at almost midnight. Europe is around there or slightly before, and eastern South America needs to catch the eclipse right when the moon rises over the Atlantic. Coming to quakes, this killed a dozen people. Won't count for my six magnitude rubric, but for others using different scaling. It was the largest earthquake there in six months. 11 years ago, this was the best we had. Now, synthetic aperture radar allows us to penetrate the canopy and see real flood data. Seems to be some confusion in comments and messages about exactly where the Voyagers are. You should see Voyager 1 encountering more galactic particles than Voyager 2, but not yet free of our sun's influence. Once that happens, they will need to confirm a directional change in the magnetic field and then declare them to be beyond. Everyone should hop over to Tony Phillips, spaceweather.com to see the elliptical moon halo story. Some guesses as to what causes them, and an atmospheric optics expert saying something strange is happening in our skies. You guys are going to have a field day with that one in the comments section. Quickly going around the RSOE alert map, got red tide warnings in Turkey. Apparently the downpours put on a light show for Northland yesterday. Good to hear it was mostly a visual event. Not so in New Orleans, where the damage totals will wait for daybreak. Buoy in event mode, Northern Pacific. There are such things as rogue waves, but a 45 meter deviation from top to bottom is over a 100 foot wave. I say that must be an error because it's the type of thing people on coastlines would tend to notice, or ships and shipping lanes. Forgive this crude photo, it's part of the invasive species translocation study, but highlights that the northern lines are indeed one of the four primary paths across the world's largest ocean. So indeed, this appears to be an unreal reading. Flaring put us on the edge of our seat for about a week, but for three straight days now the earth-facing quiet tracked at this channel for two years is continuing. Happened to catch a tiny sea flare in progress, and you can indeed still notice the energy signatures from those you see coming up into the North Pole area, which is not from the flare. It's actually a minor proton flux underway this morning. Let's keep a watch on that. Solar wind. As we expected yesterday, the density dropped off from readings near 100 to between 4 to 12 now. Speed jumped from 350 kilometers per second to nearing 500. Temperatures from around 3,000 up to 50,000 Kelvin. But despite strong disturbances in Earth's magnetic field, enough to allow enormous plasma penetration almost all day, enough to induce baseline resonances rising off the charts, it was not able to produce a magnetic storm. Instability was handled very nicely. In terms of sunspots, got big ones on the limbs, four small active regions in the middle, some developing, some in decay. The monster spot headed out is still Delta, quiet like her recent Earth-facing ancestors. Last test will be to see if a large eruption accompanies her departure from Earthly influence. Turning towards Earth, we have decay in the north, spreading south, and a monster in the middle that appears magnetically mixed. Let's watch her for the next few days. Main umbral opening, essentially past Earth, with the eclipse tonight and the coronal hole stream weaker than expected, we'll call it the last day of the watch. Interestingly, last bit of this, the red opening appears to dip close to the equator. It is that dark sliver just below the bright active region here, and it appears that it will face Earth when Saturn opposes the Sun. Our next watch will be short. Actually got some world weather imagery to close today before taking some last looks at our star as always. Eyes open. No fear, it's 6.25 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.